Hi everyone, welcome to the last video in this short series of four buildings in jars from Small Pictures by Johanna Basford using Stedler pencils. Now I had quite a few of you ask me to do this so I hope that you have um, been happy with it. I have really had a lot of fun with doing these backgrounds and things like that. Now there was a very similar page in Hmm, Worlds of Wonder with Houses in Bottles and um, I really had fun with that one too and uh, it was quite a popular series so maybe this one will be, I'm not sure. Um, I am just grabbing my number 83 pencil to do the um, glass on this one. We're starting with the glass first. Um, we're doing it in the same way as all the others, but just in case you haven't seen those yet, I'm just fading it towards the middle like that. The same on the other side. And then a thicker amount across the bottom. I'm doing this first because I have absolutely no idea how to colour this one because it's a nighttime sky and I've already done a purple sky of sort of violet and I don't want to do black so I'm trying to think about what to do and in the meantime I think that's all lid so that's it for the glass we're not going to use the darker one to do any shading or anything any shadows um I have seen some very pretty skies done in a sort of reddish pink plum pink that sort of color from black but we don't have huge amounts should we give it a go let's give it a go I'm going to start with black number nine I'm going to go black at the bottom and go lighter upwards Let me just move my pen so it happens to be under my arm so you want the most intense bit of black down here at the ground like that and then start to fade it now I'm going to fade this quite slowly because my next color isn't particularly dark so I need it to look still like it's night time so I need some black behind if that makes sense so the way to fade it is to just to do less pressure and less layers upwards I've got a bit on the roof there and uh, take it up as far as I need. It's quite difficult to fade it right out because it's such a strong colour but I'm hoping about here I can sort of go to nothing. Now I'm going to go back and intensify that bottom bit and then try and fade it down. like that. Let me look from the side. Yeah, I need to just tidy up a little bit. The light shining off it. At least it's not sunny. This time yesterday there was sun all over the desk and I couldn't record. Now this um, candle um, has some light lines coming out of it we'll draw those back in at the end now I'm starting to fade it and I will look to the other side to try and get it reasonably even so both sides look similar it's not that easy to do that but I do my best that's all I can do this might be a little bit daunting for you um, if you aren't keen on doing it black, you can just use the um, next colour, which is the 61 I'm going to be using. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Deep Mauve or some strange name? I can't remember. I need to put a little bit in here. As well. I'm finding this black quite difficult to work with, I have to say. But I'm going to stop and put... I think I'm going to fade it using a grey. 
actually to the top. So I'm going to grab the 80, which is the light grey, and just put a bit on. I think that will make it easier to fade it to nothing. There we go. I'm not managing to fade it completely to nothing, but definitely less. I think that's a little bit easier for me anyway. There we go. No, it's a bit messy, but we'll um, add our pink and then see how we go. So yes, this is called Dark Mauve or Red Violet, number 61. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Put this on. I get a sort of tint to the um, black. Now I'm, my intention is not to make the black not look black. That was never the intention. The intention is to make it look like a dark reddish and pinkish colour. So I hope it's sort of going to work. My son is humming. I can hear him. <laughs> Both home today, my boys. One of them has been doing a bit of work, I'm getting on quite well from the seems of it. I think he stopped work now. Um, the other one um, wasn't in the right mindset to do any, so he's having a day off. I think it's quite good, really, that they know what they can do and can't. And it's difficult, though, because when you become an adult, you can't just choose to have a day off, unfortunately, unless you're self employed. And even then you have to try and have some self-discipline because, you know, you don't get paid if you don't do any work. And depending on what sort of occupation you're in, you still have to work. Oops, I've gone over the edge, never mind. Right, how are we looking? It's looking a bit strange. I'm going to put another layer of this on. I'm going to try and really layer it up at the bottom here. Let's get quite a thick layer down here. And then start to taper it off. If you're using something like polychromos and you haven't started yet, you could probably get away with using like a red violet or a magenta for this with then a sort of lighter tone without having to use the black behind. But because um, these aren't intense enough my liking I wanted to use the black so I hope that makes sense right just I need to start thinking about the building as well I think think about that while I do this bit. I want it to be different to the rest so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. We could do some green in it. I'm going to use a lighter pink now. This is the number 20 and I'm going to go over all of it in the 20. Um, yes because the um, we haven't done a green building but we do have some leaves on this building, which I think I would do in green. So I don't know whether it needs much more green. We have a sort of reddish building. We don't have brown, but brown is a bit dull. And I'm wondering... Because hmm. it's dark, does that mean we need to do something dark? I don't know. Hmm. Ponder, ponder. Now I often do a grey roof, and we haven't done a grey roof yet, so I could potentially do that. That would be something. I was just thinking I could do a pink lid to our jar, because of the pink that I'm using now. But it goes right up to the lid, so that would be a silly idea. Plus, um, we've got a pink lid, so we won't do a pink lid. 
try not to go over the lid. I'll try not to go over any of it, but I'm not succeeding very well. What I'm going to do is colour the other way, and I think we'll get a stronger coverage. And we'll cover up some of those sort of lines. It's a bit awkward colouring this way for me with my book the way that it is. I think I'm nearly happy. Nearly happy. There we go. I'm going to leave that there for now. I may return to it. This star has been coloured in by mistake. So I'm thinking that maybe... Um, what colour do I do them? I'm going to try and erase it actually. That's the easiest thing to do. Really difficult to do though. I say it's easy. Without erasing around it. I think that's not too bad. I'm going to colour that in next. I'm going to use the really vibrant um, 11, the sand. Oh, it clashes a bit with that pink. There we go. Now I've got a lot of dots in the sky. We can do those with a white pen at the end. Now, I think I'm going to just start with a few things that I know what colour I want to do them and then just work around really. So let's do the light from the windows. This is 110. This is the bright yellow. I think they would shine out brightly because um, of it being dark. Now there's some, I think these are windows too. You may not agree, you may think there's something else, but... And around here. Okay, now the leaves. Mm, no, actually the colour of the leaves is going to be partially determined by the building. I am going to do the roof and I'm going to use number 8 grey. Okay. Now when I've got a roof like this, I tend to fade it a little bit towards the centre to try and give the impression that it's round, because it's a tower. So I'm going to layer up those edges a little bit. I'm also going to use this colour here, just to sort of match it in. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the chimney. sort of fade a bit towards the top maybe as we our light is higher up it doesn't actually make sense I'm just thinking to be lighter there because the sun would be setting it would be lighter at the bottom hmm never mind but that does happen doesn't it it gets darker lower down maybe it's moonlight yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to make a decision haven't I now the chimney's got bricks but we've done a brick red type house we've done a blue one um what should we do I'm thinking purple it's quite dusky dark or we could go with browns browns so we've got that that door which looks to me like wood. We've done a wooden door already, but a wooden door goes with anything. Let's do a wooden door first. This is our seven. It's our light brown. We we'll use that first on our wooden door. And then we'll use a slightly darker colour after. Mm, yeah. Now these sort of stones around the door, quite tempted to do those in a sort of grey brick and then maybe match that with the chimney. 
but let's finish the door first. I want to try and make that even. I was sitting back in my chair and I couldn't see what mess I was making. There we go. So I'm going to grab the darkest brown. It is the tobacco brown or um, warm sepia 77. And just put some lines on the door. To give the impression of wood, I don't know how visible that is, but that's what I did. Now bricks around the door. I think the um this one, whoops, I nearly dropped it. The 85, the warm grey, is quite good for this. I'm gonna give it a sharpen. It's it's almost slightly brownish, so I feel it is quite nice for bricks. So all the way around and then just Gently reduce the colour to the centre. And doing it like this means that we still got lots of choice with regards to colour. I'm just going to put something down on that page. I just realised you're not very much in the middle, are you? Sorry. Uh, I'm expecting the doorbell to potentially ring. Um, oh, one person that I have got a time they're coming. Now I'll be finished by the time they come. But I'm expecting possibly the water company to come because I'm having a few leak problems in our area into the street. Lucky not into anybody's house, but. Um, they said it would be sometime in the next five days, so goodness knows they're coming. Now, chimney. Same sort of technique, I think. Now, I'm not going to shape this one because it's made of square bricks. It's going to be a square chimney, not a rounded one. So there won't be shadow on the edges or anything like there would be with the round the round chimney that we did on the very first house. I'm gonna do the little pots and things in a slightly different colour. Should we go lighter or dark? Let's go darker. This is eight nine zero. It is our cool grey thirteen. It's actually quite a dark colour. And I'm just going to gently bring that in, make it dark on this one because it's further back. And then a bit lighter here just by using less pressure. There we go. So we've got warm grey and dark grey and I'm going to use that on this too. I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be a sort of metal chimney, but yeah. Um, now... I still haven't made a decision about the house colour. I think I might go a sort of light browns, ochre type colours. I've got this colour which I haven't used yet. This is 17, it's called light ochre. I'm going to use this for the main house colour. It's quite pale, it's a bit different. It will help our house to stand out a bit from the uh, background. It's light colour, isn't it? It means we can easily darken it up a little bit if we need to. I think I'll go inside these as if it's just a sort of painted on. It's almost green, isn't it? Yellowy green, I would say. Oh, we must remember to do this a little bit down here. Just going to go over it a little bit more, make sure it's uh, got enough vibrancy to it. Now, under the roof, there will be some shadow and in some area there is too. 
I'm just looking to see what might be best to use. I think the light olive might be quite good at just darkening it a little bit. This is 56. I'm going to just try popping a little bit under there. Might not be enough. I'm going to put a bit each side here. Hmm, I think it's okay. A bit under here. Now I'm going to do those leaves in the um, olive green, which is number 57. I'm just going to sharpen it. They're really small, so I'm just going to colour them in. Now, I think I know what I'm going to do now for the frame. We have a brownish colour, browny green. I'm just trying to tell what it's called. The Dark Ochre, number 19. It's a sort of greenish brown. I think that will work nicely. Window frame. And also I'm going to use a tree. Mm. Yeah. Couldn't decide then. Very indecisive. Not really the best um, mindset to be in when you're uh, colouring in front of the camera, really, is it? I really should try and uh, make sure I can make up my mind a little bit more. There we go. There is that bit. Now, um, this um, here, this piece coming out here, is that colour but the actual um, um lantern thing um I might use 16 actually and use it as if it's a gold I'm gonna have to sharpen it 16 is our golden okay you see use a little bit each end leave a tiny white cap in the middle so hard. I don't think I left a gap. And the flame. We haven't done the flame. I'm going to grab an orange. This is for the orange. And the candle itself is just a line. I think I'm going to leave it. I think trying to colour that in is going to be tricky. Now the lid. I've actually made a decision. 579. This is olive dark. I think it will just work with the colours that we've got here. And I'm just going to make it darker here and then lighter towards the middle, just like the others. Almost fading to nothing, but not quite. would be nearly done. Now I don't normally do backgrounds on pages like this and I'm not going to this time either but if you wanted to I would just sweep some soft pastels around the page or something like that you know nothing too much um, but some people are very um, inventive with regards to thinking about things like that but not me. We do need to put our use our white pen just to finish off. Oh, door handles. I'm so good at forgetting door handles, aren't I? 16. There's the door handle. Here is the white pen. <laughs> we'll get there. So we've got our shine coming here. 
Now we've got dots in the sky. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger so they show up. If you just move your pen around on the paper a little bit, you get a bigger dot. If you tap and move away, you get a small dot. Now we need some shine on our glass, um, like last time. Let's start here. Pen wants to run out, hang on. As I say, it gets a bit clogged, it can be whoop, got all rubber under my I um eraser pencil under my arm. Different. And a bit of a line on this. I've kept I've kept them quite similar. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I feel happier with it like that. So there is our last um little one. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the page as a whole. Um, try not to zoom out too much or I should see my messy desk. Let's take away whoops, the papers from behind so you can see it. I think it always looks a little bit better if it's against the desk because you've got this sort of slightly darker outline. So there we go, four houses in jars. So yeah, I enjoyed that. So thank you for... Um, those of you that suggested I do it. I hope that you've um, enjoyed the video too and that um, maybe you've coloured along or um, got some ideas. You know, they're all done in slightly different ways so you could make them all really similar by doing the same background on each one and the same colour scheme on the house of each one and the same colours for the plants on each one or you could make them all different like I have, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's up to you. But uh, yeah. That, that's me so uh, yeah thank you so much for watching this uh, little series I'm um, not sure what's coming next I really ought to delve into a different book I think I'm getting an awful lot from here <laughs> I'll have a think and see what I can come up with but thank you so much for watching please do like subscribe and comment if you can and happy colouring